Mickey Shook, a.k.a. Carrie Trainer, is up next. Hey, but first, if you have legal matters that involve firearms and you need to call California firearms lawyer John Dillon, especially if you have questions on red flag laws, gun navigation, gun transportation, or maybe you just need to know that your guns are California compliant. Call our trusted firearms attorney, John Dillon. That's John Dillon because he specializes in California gun laws. Go with the expert. 760-642-7150. That's 642-7150. Harry code 760. Or you can go to his website, DillonLawGP.com. All right, our first guest here on Gun Owners Radio is Mickey Shook. He's a carry trainer. We're going to find out his story and exactly what a carry trainer is. Uh, Mickey, are you there? I am here. How are you, my friend? I'm doing excellent. Thank you for having me. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for coming on. Um, so talk to us a little bit. What, what exactly is a carry trainer? Well, a carry trainer is me, I guess. It's quite <laughs> simple. We teach people uh, how to carry firearms properly, effectively, safely, uh, but not just the concept of how to put it in a holster and put it on your hip, but the mindset, tactics, strategies, know-how uh, of how to use it to prevail in violence. That's kind of the overarching mindset. I, I feel like there's a lot. There's definitely, of course, a big need. You know, the the shooting world has definitely taken a big turn towards carry. You know, it's not about hunting anymore. It's certainly not about sport necessarily. It's about carry these days. That's, you know, and, and the more... I think it's a more it's a broader skill set that's needed. There's definitely a lot more information that's needed, um, you know, than competition, even than hunting. Um, so you know, there's so much more you, you got to know and learn. There's so much more nuance. You got to know law. You got to know equipment. You got to know all kinds of stuff. So what what made sure. you um, decide that that was going to be your emphasis? Well, I think the point you just made is is an excellent point. Uh, it's everything you're talking about, it's full circle. These things uh, were part of the normal human existence, not just for Americans, but people around the globe. Weapons were used not just for taking game, uh, not just for sport, but for what the purpose of a weapon is, to defend uh, to defend the bearer of said weapon. I'm not going to get in the weeds on, on the semantics of of war or violence but because that's so subjective. But uh, I think a good analogy is, especially in this modern day and age, simple things like a farmer's market or uh, making soap or, or one raising their own bees to get honey or a garden – has now become almost like uh, some type of cliche hobby, whereas you did these things if you wanted to live uh, <laughs> even just 100, 150 years ago. Yeah. And now it's, it's, it's like uh, it's almost, I use the word cliche again, it's, uh, it has become this cliche thing where we do these things, and there's nothing wrong with them. It's wonderful, but we forget none of this stuff is new. Uh, these are, and, and so in that with the firearms, I've been involved in, in hunting uh, and, and sport shooting and training with firearms my entire life in some capacity. I uh, worked with our, our state with the hunter safety program, mm -hmm. uh, worked with NRA teaching as well as developing some programs in the past and other such organizations and found a really huge gap. Uh, in many of these programs based on uh, application uh, in violence. Hmm. And we, we tend to be so concerned about safety, as we should, uh, but we forget that every time we, we touch a gun, every time we interact with a firearm, we're ingraining some type of habit. And uh, it is very important that we ingrain habits that are going to support the desired outcome for me, the desired outcome is me or one of my family or a student that works with us. They have the proper tools to win in violence. So your question of uh, 
what got me into it was seeing a lack in that area. And I, I will say there are many great people in the space. I've got some great mentors uh, that, that passed on things to me, but it seems that by and large, a lot of folks get into this space and you hear the uh, something off repeated, hey, I just want to teach the basics. Well, the basics is the whole thing. There isn't anything else. The application is the basics. Michael Jordan shoots a basketball just like a 10 year driveway shoots a basketball. Uh, so we need to make sure that we're learning basic fundamental skills that, again, I'll say it again, support us winning in violence, if that is what your goal is, if that's why you have a gun. I don't know anybody that carries a gun for fun. I, you know, I think that it, it's really interesting the way you put it about, you know, honey and bees and ch raising chickens and, you know, growing your own food, that sort of thing. It is kind of a luxury hobby, you know, now where it used to be required to eat. Um, and I think it's mm -hmm. a very interesting, uh, it's a very interesting perspective. I've never quite heard it, you know, put that way, but the, I, I think a big difference though is, yeah, we've had to defend ourselves, uh, selves for, for, you know, for generations, for centuries, but since the dawn of man. Um, but really in, yeah. just in my lifetime, the, uh, you know, and I'm everybody, I'm, you know, early mid twenties, just in my lifetime. <laughs> Plus shipping and handling. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh, lot, the lot. shipping and handling. <laughs> There's a lot of shipping and handling. You're 87. I'm 47, and just in my lifetime, I've seen enormous strides in the uh, teaching of, uh, you know, carrying. I mean, it's, you know, the science of carrying has changed tremendously uh, in the last few decades. It's really, really improved sure. tremendously. Um, you know, I just, just even like the, the four basic universal rules – uh, since the 80s has been uh, uh, has has changed and has been broadened and has been kind of set in stone. Um, so I, you know, I, I guess what I'm saying is it, it's it's gotten to be a science. They've kind of perfected things, and that knowledge needs to be uh, you know disseminated into the into the into the public because we have over 20 million CCW holders. So I, I think it's a it's an excellent it's an excellent excellent. Uh, niche, if that's if that's, I, I hope you don't mind me putting it. Is, is that is it a niche? Do you consider it a niche? Sure. I mean, if you walk into any town USA and ask to go to a diner, uh, a car dealership, a church, and ask, hey, how many of you people in here train with firearms as a combative element for self defense? People are going to look at you like you're crazy. Mm -hmm. So I think it's pretty fringe, actually. Uh, when you think about how many people actually train with firearms, how many people carry them, different story, but how many people actually invest in real legitimate training? It is a tiny fraction of the population. You know, it really is. It, I tell you, I should put together the numbers. I mean, the percent, it starts to drop uh, significantly. You know, if you look at the percentage of Americans that actually own a gun, it's something like basically somewhere around a third, I think. Um, and then if you look at the gun owners, you know, how many of them uh, train, you know, it starts dropping. You know, how many of them carry daily? It starts, it drops even more. And then how many? Uh, oh, it's, it's not even close to yeah. you know, yeah. the ownership numbers. But not to, to talk over you. No, no, sure. But to get to the, the type of training, once you drill down and get to, you know, somebody that owns a gun, carries a gun, has a permit, and gets the type of training that they need, which is what you're offering, it's 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 minuscule, and I, you know I don't know I don't know what, what do you think like uh, uh, broadly how do you think groups like you know Gun Owners Radio and San Diego County Gun Owners and you know all these other all these groups how do you what do we do how, what do you think the message should be or how do you think uh, we should be effective in encouraging people to get this level of training? Well, I think if we're talking to the audience that folks like you and I are we call friends and peers, let's look at the Second Amendment, well-regulated. Oftentimes, uh, I think most people in this space understand that 18th century vernacular of regulated did not mean government regulations. The right. word regulated from that day and time, just so we're all on the same page, it meant trained up in the sense of a, of a firearm. It meant lubed up, ready to go, shot and powder was available. It meant that the owner of that firearm 
understood the dope for that, that musket or rifle and understood how to hit targets at whatever distance it was capable inside of. So re- regulated, if we're going to all quote the Second Amendment constantly and pound our chest at Congress and anti-gunners to, to and in your state, Gavin Newsom, let us live up to that standard that the founders set forth. It wasn't just you have a right to own these guns. It was you have a right to own these guns and we, the people, expect you to be well-trained, not just an owner of this thing sitting in a box or sitting in a gun safe or sitting in a closet. We expect you to be able to be called to duty in defense of your neighborhood, your community, your family, and even your nation. That was what the intent of the founders was. That's not Mickey's opinion. That's every legal scholar I've ever ever listened to speak on it. So that that would be my call to action. I think it's tremendous. We we teach, you know, it was just been last since, well, 2017, that you could actually get a carry permit in San Diego. And we have a seminar that we teach that teaches people how to apply and get their permit. And there's one slide about three quarters of the way in, in big red letters that says, it's not just a right, it's a responsibility. And that is exactly what you're describing. And I think that you did it very uh, eloquently um, in saying, hey, you know, this is, yeah, you have the right to keep and bear arms, but remember that first part, you know, you got it. You, that's that's your responsibility. The other part of that is, and I know you have a background in, 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 uh, in politics as well, which I want to talk about on the other side of the break, but um, the other thing is if you don't, as a gun owner, take that responsibility, guess who's going to force that responsibility on you? The government, you know, it's, they're gonna, it, it mm-hmm. opens the door wide open for the government to say, well, they're not doing it right, so we're going to make them do it right. So that in and of itself is, should, should be motivating. But, uh, Mickey, this is awesome, mm-hmm. man. We're going to take, a, uh, we're gonna take a, a break, and then I want to talk to you more about uh, your background, how you got into this. Um, like I said, I, I, correct me if I'm wrong on the other side, but I believe you've done some uh, political work, and I want to talk a little bit about that as well. Yes, sir. Hey, by the way, Audrey. Is she listening right now? Well, of course she's listening. Audrey, if you're listening, I'm going to send you a couple pictures of my Jeep. Yeah, because she he's just, man, he, where do you see these windows, man? You're yeah. Going away. They're bulldog. I, they're bulldog windows, is that what and it's a DB8 hardtop. And, and why and does they, that not surprise me? They're bulldog windows. I don't know. You know what's funny? I was telling the guy, I said, hey, man, I ordered these bullfrog windows. And he's like, what? <laughs> Apparently it's bulldog. I think it might be. But hey, Orange County gun owners, they know it's dedicated to preserving and restoring Orange County and self-defense rights. If you live in Orange County and want to help defend and restore the Second Amendment, you need to join. OCGunOwners.com slash join. Orange County Gun Owners is the do-something organization to restore and defend the Second Amendment. Volunteer at a shooting social at a gun shop or tabletop and help more pro-gun local officials get elected. Save the date, Orange County Gun Owners Prom. Gun Prom is May 20th. Become a member today at ocgunowners.com slash join and help. I can't find her profile on Facebook. Audrey, if you're listening, send me a text on, or send me a message on Facebook. and I'll Let me send you her number. (laughs) No, not well. I might have her number, but send me a a little message on Facebook. I'll send you some pictures of my cool, my cool new mods. I know. My new toy. He's up there. Now you got to get off road. (laughs) <laughs> I do that occasionally. Am I supposed to go off road with this? <laughs> I'm too busy in the mall yeah, parking you're lot. Too. Yeah, you are the you are the mauler. Exactly. Okay, so we're talking to Mickey Shook, who's a carry trainer out of Illinois, which I pick up a little bit of an accent, Mickey. You probably don't even realize. You know, I'm sure everybody has your accent there, but I'm picking up just a little bit of an Illinois. How close to Chicago are you? I'm just down the road, about 30 miles, 40 miles. And do you drive a Jeep? Yeah. <laughs> I definitely do not. I drive the only vehicle a man should drive, a Ford pickup truck. (laughs) (laughs) I've I've, I've owned several Cherokees in my life. Never a Wrangler. Yeah, well, he's got a two-door, short wheelbase. (laughs) That's right. Jacked to the hilt. Never seen dirt. That's not stop by for. Why would you say that? I'm like a Barbie Jeep. That's what you're <laughs> oh, that's it. My, uh, that's it. That's the best one yet. It's my Daisy Duke Jeep. I know, I know. I like Daisy Duke. Yeah. I like the Barbie Jeep. That's cute. How dare you? How dare both of you? <laughs> All right, my friend. Daisy Duke drove before she had the Jeep. What's that? What did she drive before she had a Jeep? 
What was it? I think it was a Dodge Dart. Uh, yeah, I think it was. Yeah, now that I think about it. Yeah, that's I think it was. Obs- yeah. that's, obs- that's an obscure reference. Wow. Yeah, that's good. I like this guy. Yeah. What was the Lone Ranger's nephew's horse? Anyway. Anyway. <laughs> Sam can tell us. <laughs> All right, Mickey. So you're a care- by the way, Mickey Shook. That's a, that is one of the coolest names I think in in uh, firearms training right there. You should. Uh, you oh. should. I was thinking about it. You should if you do night classes. You could. You could. Uh, do you do night classes like night uh, training? Here it comes. Here it comes. Get ready. Sure brother. we do. Yeah, let's hear this. Lay it on me. You could call it Shook Night. That'd be awesome. Shook Night or Shook Me like All Night it. Long. That be- actually we do use that reference in my family. <laughs> <laughs> Why did that not? Brother that are that are musicians. <laughs> Isn't it funny how somebody hears your name and they think they come up with the first idea of a change of your name? Yeah. You know, here's something. What do you think yeah. of that? Yeah, yeah. I've heard that once or twice. So let's talk about your yeah. uh, let's talk about your your origin story. How did you get into firearms? Did you grow up around firearms, or what? 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 what how did you get bit by the bug? Uh, you know, when I was uh, from the earliest age, I loved the outdoors. As long as I can remember, I, I was uh, fascinated by tales of our our founding and men like Daniel Boone. I think my eighth grade yearbook, my hero was Daniel Boone and Davy Crockett. So those kinds of of uh, men and what they did and what they meant for our republic left a, a mark on me. Um, I actually had an accident with a firearm when I was uh, in grade school, a boy. Uh, errantly shot me in the face with a BB gun, Jeez. and it cost me the vision in my right eye. Oh my gosh! Um, I'm so sorry to hear that. You... Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a horrible story. But it, it, uh, I was being safe in that moment. It's a very simple story. He pointed a loaded gun at me. He thought it was unloaded. Pulled the trigger, and it shot a, a BB into my oh. head, which is still in me to this day. And it caused a, a hole in the retina of my eye. But. Um, just seeing how easy something like that could happen. Yeah. And if he ever hears this, I'd love him. I'm not mad at him, but uh, it's you're a bigger it man than I am. Me. We we eh, we were children, yeah. but it, it's such an easy thing to happen. So I I have a a great respect for firearms and the damage that they can cause. Mm-hmm. I think they should be wheeled for righteous pur- purposes, and so. Uh, in my state, like you guys in California, we were unable to lawfully carry a firearm. So my children are adults now. I actually was with my granddaughter before the, the show here. And as my kids were young, it frustrated me immensely that the state that I lived in, worked in, uh, operated a business in, stopped me from possessing a firearm on my body to protect my family as we were out and about. And it eventually irritated me to the point that I began looking at ways to help change the law. Uh, I got involved in a a local organization, and that local organization dovetailed with several other small grassroots groups, and we pushed and pushed and pushed. Uh, I knew men like Otis McDonald, McDonald versus City of Chicago, a case that went all the way to the United States Supreme Court affecting gun rights across the country. So at that time, this is the early 2000s, there was a lot of very uh, big cases happening, a lot of stuff happening in state houses across the country, and I happened to uh, get hitched to the wagon of some very bright minds and learned a lot. And ultimately, kind of the way I saw it is we needed to elect uh, pro-freedom-loving candidates in a local level for multiple reasons. Uh, One of them being that people often overlook, most people don't just become a senator or a congressman. Oftentimes those people are a state rep, they're a a mayor, they are a city councilman, they're a a county board person, uh, et cetera. And so we're stacking a bench of players with representatives, not politicians, not leaders, but with people that truly represent. So I got involved in that, helped run some campaigns for sheriffs, state's attorneys, uh, state reps, state senators, uh, worked on a, a gubernatorial race, uh, and that man won in our state. His name is Bruce Rauner. Uh, he's no longer the governor. We've got a pretty bad one now, but uh, learned quite a bit, and I try to pass that on now. 
because I think too often people in general, myself included at certain points in life, we, we don't see ourselves as a viable instrument of change uh, in our communities. We see ourselves as, as uh, little tiny cogs in a huge machine often, or we see ourselves as pawns in a game, and that's yeah. not what our founders intended. So I spent a lot of years, sometimes I look back and I, I feel bad about it because I was away from my children, uh, away from the family quite a bit at, at boring meetings, uh, putting signs out in yards, out raising money. I was at dinners and lunches and things like that. Uh, you know, doing, I, I talk about this stuff because while most of my friends were at war doing uh, uh, very uh, uh, hard laborsome things that cost some of them their lives and limbs, I was off at luncheons. Uh, in, in dinners and things like that. So I don't want to sound like a complainer. Uh, I must you know, predicate my point on that. I'm grateful that I was able to do that stuff. And so that was kind of my, my dovetail into that space. And I'm still working on it now. I'm, I'm helping some sheriff candidates across the country. I believe that the sheriff is uh, one of the most important elected positions uh, for, for many reasons, which we could go into if you want to. Uh, state's attorney is also of equal importance. And judges, people now are seeing crime spring up across the country, uh, violence, mayhem, looting, et cetera. Judges are the people that are locking these people up or letting them out on the street. Judges are these people that are setting bonds or, or waiving bonds. And we elect these people. And it's, it's important that we pay attention to that. And that's something in this space, uh, this the firearms, freedom-loving, Second Amendment uh, uh, space, I too often hear, I get a lot of pushback. I hear things to the effect of, uh, I'm deluded. Mickey, you don't understand. We have no power. It's the <laughs> Vanderbilt. It's the, yeah. you know, the, the, the George Soros. bankers that can. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's. And, and the fact is, I have sat in rooms with a dozen governors. I have sat in rooms with Congress people and senators, and it's just little old me. Nobody put me there. Nobody, nobody put me up to it. I didn't sell my soul. You inject yourself into that space, and you go do the work, and you either do it or you don't. And I think if we all kind of banded together around the common sense and the common theme of protecting this fragile document, this Constitution that holds us all together, rather than bickering about these little individual points that are all important. They're all, they're all important, but we sometimes lose sight that the overarching concept of what holds the fabric of our republic together requires us to have some commonality and be on the same page. I think that's that awesome. Your question? That perfectly. And I, I couldn't have said it better, and I've said it all similar because we, we came to the same conclusion here in San Diego, which started San Diego County Gunners. You're absolutely right. Everything you said, I, bravo. Excellent job. That's really, really terrific. And I thank you for it, doing it. so much. That I, And I, I, I can relate to every single word you said, the boring meetings, the luncheons, the the idea of uh, you know people. I, honestly, I, they're just lazy. In my eyes, you know, they're just making an excuse. Oh, I'll never be able to make a difference. Well, yeah, you can. You know, you're just choosing not to. And, in fact, that's the exact uh, reason that they set up the Constitution the way they set it up. We're the, we're the, the you know, the experiment is the country of the self-governed. And that, that means you, you got to actually put some effort into, uh, you know, what's going on with your with your government. So congratulations. That's very, very cool. Now, how much? How much? Uh, how, when you, with, how much say did county like here? The sheriff pretty much had one hundred percent control over carry permits. Was it similar in, sure. in Illinois? Is that is that how that worked? No. So, so we've got a we've got a statewide law, which is oh, what I here. Let's let's answer it on the. I'm so sorry, Mickey. Let, let's answer it on the other side of the break here. You that's, got it. That's the teaser, though. <laughs> that's the teaser. Now write it down so you'll know what to ask him. I'll when you come. I will not. I, I have a mind like well, a like a what's that? What's that? Bear term? trap? Like a something? That's like a bear trap. <laughs> yeah, you just can't remember. Mousetrap. <laughs> Mousetrap. I'm getting abused today. She's man. good. You know, she's had a couple of really I know, good. She's figures. just lobbing grenades. And by then way. she's not saying anything. She just smiles and goes back to <laughs> working on her computer. Did you pick this music? 
I, that's me playing right there. Okay, I was. Just... It's my little solo. Wait a minute. Right. Oh, that note was perfect right was there. Absolutely. I really nailed that. Hey, did you folks know we have a world class <laughs> flight training school right here in San Diego? Pilots can fly almost every day. We're close to the ocean as well as the desert and mountains. SDFTI instructors can help you learn to navigate around the U.S. Who came up with this? <laughs> Border and military bases. That's why San Diego is one of the best places to learn how to fly. Kumbaya, Dave. Kumbaya. I'm, I'm serious. Enunciate. You just earn. You just go. Go. Just give them a call at 858-569-1822. Yeah. You know, everybody I know that's taken these courses. Yeah. Just they love it. You know, Mark Larson's and of the world. It's amazing. Nice. Eight five eight five six nine one eight two two. You know, Mickey. Before we ask, we, so I asked before the break uh, how much power local local officials had and and sheriffs. Uh, but before we do that, I wanted to uh, I wanted to go back to your story about uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, getting shot in the eye when you were a kid. I actually exact same thing happened to me. I was five, and one of my brothers, uh, I have an older brother, and one of his friends takes an air rifle, puts it right in my eye, and pulls the trigger. Now, it was not loaded, but I got this huge puff of air, you know, and uh, it scared me, and I cried, and I was terrified, and I thought I was, you know, I was five years old, you know, and to this day, I cannot stand this guy. I, I, I don't know if I ever saw him again after that, but this is this is the reason I tell that story. Now, you forgave your guy, which is awesome, and I think that that's uh, truly, sincerely a, a, a great thing that says a lot about your character. I didn't forgive my guy. You beat your guy to the pulp. And no, I was too young. But a few years ago, I did a little Google search on him and found out that he did some time in jail. And I was I was a little satisfied. Oh, you're <laughs> terrible. I, I felt a little good about that. I can see why you're satisfied. I know, right? <laughs> I was kind of, thank you, Jackson. The Jackson. philosopher of the room. Well, Jackson, I know. Jackson foreshadowing are, with that incident. He and I are always on the same page. Anyway, Mickey, <laughs> <laughs> that's my story. Um, so we were talking about how much, so how much control did local officials have over carry permits and that sort of thing? How did that work in Illinois? Well, so it's a, we have a statewide preemptive law. So preempt, it preempts local laws and ordinances. There was a period of time before the law took effect that allowed local ordinance ordinances to take effect. Um, that being said, constitutional rights are not and should not be at the whim of a sheriff. But the reason that it was important to us as lawmakers, when it comes to specific things, such as firearms, when we think of firearms, most people think of policemen and soldiers. So lawmakers go to law enforcement. Uh, so in, in our state, the uh, Sheriff's Association, which is not a governmental body, uh, it's a, it's a uh, an entity which most states have something like that made up of, of uh, sheriffs elected across the state. They were polled uh, for their opinions. The st state chiefs of police association, those types of organizations are polled and looked at uh, for their opinion. So we wanted to ensure that we had people in office that, that understood that it's uh, a right, and it's not something that's bestowed on us at the whim or will of some chip uh, or some elected official. So, in our state, the Constitution governs it, not the not the sheriffs. Where your state, I do believe, uh, as you stated, it's it's uh, okayed uh, by the sheriff, which many states have have such laws. Well, we, they they certainly had a lot more control prior to Bruin. Um, and then one mm -hmm. of our biggest victory uh, was 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 just a couple years into you know this is San Diego County gun owners I'm talking about. Our biggest victory was um, getting the sheriff to issue uh, before what well, long before the Bruin case happened, which we're very very happy. Um, but yeah, the sheriff's hat it was designed the way it's written is that the sheriff's had a ton of authority and a ton of discretion, and it was all very subjective here in California. So. So how excited were you guys when the McDonald case came through Chicago? Mm -hmm. And that and that was a nationwide win. Uh, that that yeah that case is cited in in, in uh, on the national level often. Uh, you know, the other reason sheriffs are so important, the sheriff is a, is a bulwark for the people. And I think it's I think anybody listening should look up the history of the sheriff. The sheriff really uh, was a tax collector. 
in, in ancient times. It's a very old, it's one of the old institutions that we have. It's the, the king. Old English law is where it originated from. But the, the sheriff is uh, a man or a woman of the people. They're there to represent us and protect us. And in the olden days, the king would tell the sheriff, there is a man or a woman that is uh, needs to be caught in the uh, posse comitatus, the, the posse, like you see in the old West movies, for a sheriff to tell the, the posse, round up, and we're going to go get the, the bad guy. That was the king saying, I empower you, sir, to go catch this bad man that stole the king's deer or whatever the heck it was. It, that person that we elect stands as a bulwark between us and federal overreach stands as a bulwark between us and all sorts of badness. Not that we can't protect ourselves, but that office is very important. There's been a push in this country to no longer elect sheriffs, but have them appointed by county governments or something like that. And the reason being is that they would be beholden to politicians and no longer to the people and to the Constitution. And that is, a, I think, a, a, a something that people should pay attention to. A lot of times folks think about a sheriff and they think of cops. And yes, it's a law enforcement officer, but more importantly, that is a that is the chief representative of law enforcement in your community. And I think the key word is representative. They serve the people. Uh, that, that's one of their jobs as well, right? To serve documents from the courts. So one of the reasons that I got so specific about that, um, we see it often, my state, our governor and, and state legislature just tried to pass, just did pass a very uh, anti-constitutional set of, of gun bills uh, that limit a bunch of ownership and all kinds of junk that folks like you in California have been dealing with for a long time. And the sheriffs across our state stood up to them. They're saying, we're not going to enforce this stuff in our county. And that doesn't mean that a city police chief wouldn't enforce it. It doesn't mean the state police aren't going to enforce it. It doesn't mean any of that. But it means at the very least that the chief uh, law officer in each specific county, and it was most of our counties that spoke out, uh, that means something. And it's a political statement as well. It says something to the, the lawmakers. Hey, wait a second. Maybe we got something wrong here. It says something to the people as well. Hey, I got your back. Uh, and, and, and I think that that is uh, one of the main things, this whole concept that I'm talking about, is why it's so important that we get good people into these offices. And I'll say it on your show, anybody running for sheriff or state's attorney uh, out on, on the, your coast, I believe you guys call them uh, something different, a district attorney, if somebody ever needs help with that and wants advice, reach out, and I will definitely offer any services I can to them as long as the candidate is going to back the things that we believe in. And that and you, you, and you're, the organization that you're affiliated with is the McHenry County Right to Carry? Is that is that the organization's name? That is. So that, that, that organization sprang up out of nothing as this became a fight here 10, 11, 12 years ago in our county. It does still uh, technically exist, except now um, we don't have that type of push. We passed that law. Uh, but there's several great organizations in my state uh, that we work with, and we to this day run one of the largest. When I say we, I mean we here in Illinois. Uh, we run one of the largest Second Amendment gathering and lobbying days in the country called iGold, Illinois Gun Owner Lobby Day, uh, which brings thousands of people to our state capitol annually to lobby our our state reps and senators and let them know what we expect from them. Oh, well, that's cool. Gold gun owner lobby day. I like that. I might I gold. Yeah. Yeah. I gold. I might, uh, we might, can we steal that? Uh, we might steal that. That's a really great idea. Well, you wouldn't be stealing it from me, but yeah. <laughs> All right. You could borrow it. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll borrow it. it. We'll re rebrand it. We'll leave off the eye, but, uh, there you go. So we have a co-host here, Mickey, who's uh, he's a competitive shooter. Um, he practices weekly. Um, he's nine years old, and he he uh, his favorite gun awesome. is he's got a nine millimeter Glock. He's got a nine millimeter Sig, and I I think he goes back and forth deciding which one is his favorite every other week. But he's got a question for you, if you don't mind, Action Jackson, fire it up. Uh, what's your favorite gun? Oh, good question. 
If I could only pick one gun, my favorite gun <laughs> Two minutes. would probably be a Smith & Wesson 686 Plus. Look at this guy. It's a seven-shot 357 revolver. This I, I swear, you're like the, I mean, gee, name like Mickey Shook. He's a firearms instructor. <laughs> You know, and he, and he, you know, with a with a seven shot revolver, three fifty seven drives a, a Ford F one fifty. I mean, golly, man, Jeez. such a carry gun. He carry that? No, I carry a Glock, <laughs> but he asked me favorites. Yeah, he said your favorite. So, well, that's awesome, Mickey. Illinois, uh, lucky to have you, my friend. Thank you so much. What a great interview, and I appreciate everything that you're doing. I appreciate you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can Thanks. I say one thing. Sure. sure. Daisy Duke drove a 1974 Plymouth Roadrunner. I don't want to leave this with the wrong car. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Thank you for clarifying. Man. Good man. We appreciate that. Hey, we look forward to talking to you down the road because I know you're coming back. Thanks, guys. See you, man. All right. Hey, Action Jackson. What? Think we ought to take a break? I certainly do think we shall take a break. Because you're looking kind of tired. You might need to take a break. Ah. Don't let her touch that. That's yours. <laughs> you have to have to ask permission to touch your microphone. Thanks for watching this clip from Gun Owners Radio. You can watch us live every Sunday from 4 to 6 p.m. California time right here on our YouTube channel. Or if you're in the San Diego area, you can listen to us on 1170 AM. We're also available on your favorite podcast platform for free. Don't forget to like and subscribe so that you can help restore and protect the Second Amendment, not just in California, but across the country.